And, you know, like, I, I have a fucking hands of main command in my chat, for example, right? And let's finish on this, because I've played with Valk, I've played with Mist. And I have this command in my chat, fucking hands I main, which, you know, there's there's a stigma towards hands I mains. You've got to just give people the benefit of the doubt, and I say this as someone who's probably going to go into Season 4 picking Widowmaker more. Um... Like, picks like Hanzo and Widowmaker can absolutely win a game so easily, so easily and so quickly. Lovely. Um, like, those picks can instantly turn a game so easily, so, so quickly. That why, why just give up on them instantly? You know, why not just give them the benefit of the doubt? And if it doesn't work, then you say, okay, if this isn't working, can you please swap? And just be polite about it, because most people will do it. Most mains I've met will do it, and if they don't do it, then fine, you just say, okay, you do you, we're just going to ignore you. Like, you just, you put them out in the mind, you try and fold around it, because at the end of the day, you're a team, and you win or lose together. And at the end of the day, you're going to forget about this game in two weeks' time, so why not just try and maximize it? Why not just try and make the best of it? Uh, I had a game today where someone got annoyed by a tracer and took it to comms. No one was attacked directly, but everyone went quiet from a night's tilt. In between rounds of King of the Hill, I tried to lighten up the mood and get everyone's mind off tilt by telling a joke, even if it was a bad one. Sort of as a wake of call. I couldn't think of one. What do you think is this something could work? Uh, in general, I just try and refocus on the game. The thing with the joke is that people, like some people just don't have a sense of humor. Um, <laughs> and some jokes are shit as well. Um, and it, to me, it's always very obvious when someone's just trying to lighten the mood. I just generally like refocus on the game. And it's like, okay, guys, we can do this. Let's... You know, we still got three rounds, whatever, or we still got two rounds of opportunity. Let's bring it back. Uh, let's just play. And yeah, you just do it like that. And you just go that way. <sighs> and yeah, like that, that's how you work around it. If people are tilting, if people are getting angry and grumpy, just refocus on the game, try and take the focus of people. If someone is blaming someone, you just say, you know, why, why are you shouting? I generally just like call them out and shouting. And it's like if they go, if they double down and go, well, this fucking person isn't doing stuff. It's like, well, you're not helping either. And some people will back off on that. Some people will take the confrontation and run with it. In that case, you just ignore them. And you say, well, you're not communicating. Okay, I'm just going to put you out of mind for now and just ignore them. Because it tilts you, it puts everyone off, it distracts everyone, makes the team a worse environment. And yeah, you just go with that. Ugh. Opening Mauser. Did I miss something? Did I miss a question? I don't know. Uh, with the nerfs to Roadhog, aren't you afraid that dive comp will come too strong? I feel like he's the only thing keeping us safe from a dive meta. Um, no. And I'm not afraid because he's still really good against dive comp. Uh, I saw over Central did a good video like who Roadhog kills and who Roadhog doesn't kill. Uh, Roadhog still kills Genji. He still kills Tracer. He still kills Winston probably really well as well. Um, Roadhog's still really good against dive comp. Anything trying to jump into a Roadhog's gonna have a bad time because Roadhog's hook should be landing uh, more often the closer stuff is. So that 8 second cooldown will honestly work better. Like the 6 second to 8 second cooldown doesn't really affect a dive comp so much. It affects standard comps more because Roadhog used to just be able to spam indiscriminately, now he can do that a little bit less with his 8 second cooldown, so any pick he gets will be less of a thing. If, Rod if they're jumping into Roadhog, then you have opportunity to get a stun on the Winston, and instantly blow the Winston up, you have an opportunity to punish anything close to you, like that helps immensely. Honestly, as well, Dive Comp is a very skill-based comp, um, like it takes a lot of skill to run it, and it takes a lot of skill to play it, it takes coordination, it takes people working together, it rewards good Overwatch play, so I'm fine with Dive Comp becoming a big thing. Any advice for getting back into the game after a break from it? You know, Kabuna keeps committing seppuku. Um, play some quick play and then just get back into it. Just jump back in. Uh, you might lose a couple of games, but whatever. Like, don't be afraid of losing. Um, it's it's It plagues me, even still to this very day, where I get upset. Well, I don't get upset, I just get a phobia of like, well, if I play now, I'm going to lose. I, I feel it today, like I'm sick, I'm unwell. So, it's it's like, ugh. It is muting. So yeah, like today I probably might not play ranked because I'm not feeling my best and I don't want to play shit game of ranked. Um, we'll see. I might go on to PTR. Actually, they turn quick play on PTR, so I want to try that some and see the new changes. Uh, is muting all chat a good way to prevent tilt? I mean, low rating and not getting any useful. Um, if, yeah, if chat is completely broken down, if chat is completely a lost cause, all people are doing is flaming, just mute it. Um, it, it sounds harmful. If you can't physically, like, if you can't ignore it yourself and just, like, put it out of your mind, muting it is honestly a fine solution. Like, if people are not communicating, if nothing of value is being said, and all people are doing is fighting, 
then it's a lost cause and it's just distracting you. It's not doing you any favors. If people are still communicating, then you might want to stay in there and just mute specific people. Uh, no one likes to be the wrong, therefore people go defensive like this, hands of this. Uh, is when by a solo queue, I don't play with anyone, mute text or voice chat because then I don't have to worry. What's your opinion on you doing this? I think it's hurting you more than helping you. Um, I think in general, if you state your case confidently, you say, uh, I picked Hanzo, I'm a GM Hanzo player, just let me give it a shot. If it doesn't work, I'll swap. And then if they still come at you, then you just say, well, no, I'm, I'm doing this. Um, whatever. And then you can mute them uh, because they're, they're clearly just trying to play the blame game. Um, but in general, like, yeah, I think just ignoring chat outright and just putting yourself out of chat outright, you're ignoring just so many useful call outs, so many opportunities to just work together a little bit more. Um, so many chances. Like, in general, the amount of teams I've played in, especially at Masters GM, where people just instantly tilt at each other, that's actually rare at those levels. Like, that happens more like platinum gold, where people just get obsessive about the meta because, you know, the hands and mains at that level aren't so good. And so they instantly tilt. But at Masters GM, people do it less. And if they say, well, this isn't the right pick, and you say, well, I'm playing this, I do this really well, trust me. If it doesn't work, I'm swapping, okay? And then they say, and they usually go, okay then. And it's, as long as you do that, as long as you're not hostile back to them, then it's okay. And then when it doesn't work, then you swap. And then they go, oh, hey, you swapped. And this, this didn't work. When you start winning again, the they go, oh, hmm, maybe I'm glad. Rather than just like denying it outright, because I think you're missing on call outs. I think you're missing on the opportunity to give information to your team as well. Uh, and I think you're just generally... Like you're disregarding an important aspect ah, of the game, voila. which is hmm. because I don't have five pounds. Feels bad, man. You almost have five pounds, though. Now I almost have five pounds extra. Thank you, P. Clark, for all the donation. It is appreciated, my friend. That fund is getting very close. It worries me. I play mainly Ryan, but if we have no hit scan, and as far as wrecking me uh, and the team, is it worth swapping to soldier or trying to stay on Ryan? Stay on Ryan. Um, you need to tell your team this fire is killing us. Um, we need to do something about it. Can, and then what I would start doing is start saying uh, maybe some maybe X swap. And the reason why I name people is because oh, of bystander effect, where if you don't name people, um, people just sit back and say, well, I'm not the problem. It's like, and if they reply, well, I'm gold damaged, then you say, well, we're still losing. So you can still be gold damaged by playing Soldier 76 and shooting the fire. Like, you'll be... I will love you for, and you, you know, give them praise encourage them like oh, come on man I will love you if you just swap to soldier and deal with this Farah please and you'll be surprised how people respond it's like okay uh, sometimes I do it in a very patronizing way where I'll say you know uh, Genji I am giving you a very special mission go kill their Zenyatta go do that and I will love you forever and it's patronizing but you'd be surprised that people do respond to it um, it's usually a bit of fun now what flavor ice cream is Tilt um, a very acidic like berry flavor you know like those those very tart berry flavors what are some good zen streamers um i think skyline plays a bunch of zen i think he's pretty good at it um other than that if mort is streaming he might occasionally play zen i'm not sure mort doesn't stream that often though is the thing uh otherwise uh chips hyen chips hyen is one of the best inyadas in the world if not the best inyada in the world so go watch that as well that's actually a very good idea I just recently watched a few of your videos. Love your reviews. After recent notes, what do you think about Anna overall? I'm picking her up and your review of Pharaohs from December is super helpful. Uh, thank you for the praise. And Anna is still very good. Anna still has the highest utility in the game. Uh, she still provides the highest healing in the game. She's still probably the best support in the game. Her ultimate is game changing. It's, it's still kind of discussing how good Anna is. And I was actually very disappointed to see Roadhog nerfed to where he can't one shot an Anna if he hooks her. Uh, that to me was actually genuinely surprising because I think Anna should have some weaknesses and she doesn't at the moment. She's hard to kill. She's like her weaknesses, she's difficult to use, but past a certain point, you just learn to get past that. And then suddenly you have this brilliant kit that can heal everyone up and stay alive and is incredibly hard to pick off in the back and has utility out the ass and has an offensive sort of push winning ultimate it's kind of it's kind of silly idqd is your nrg your thoughts uh it's gonna be interesting to see i think nrg is building up a very good core of players but nrg's problem is, hasn't generally been the core of players it's been sort of the team coordination and just the the overall skill of the team not so much the players in the team it's the ability to play as a team um so and idqd like, if you look at the reasons why he was removed from other teams, it's usually 
off the back of a little bit of internal friction. So I'm going to be curious to see how that develops. He's a very good player. And I think um, NLG ha had the makings of an incredible dive comp with Numlocked on Winston. Numlocked is very vocal as a player, uh, good at call outs, very, just likes to take responsibility, likes to make call outs and like to, to sort of lead the team. Uh, Seagull and IDDQD on Tracer Genji. That could be a fucking mind blowingly good dive comp. And I really want to see that. I'm very excited to see that. Is this person? Yeah, I, I just don't like you. Sorry, you've got an immature name and an immature attitude. I'm, I'm getting rid of you. I don't want you in the chat. Go to the chat command. Nice. I'll check it out afterwards. What a good talk, streamers. I'm not sure there are any. Uh, let's see. Hey, SL Zomor is auto hosting us. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Always more questions. Torb, Zen, Tilt, all that kind of thing. How can you handle Tilt and 2CP? An example, if the enemy team catches both points in under a minute. Uh, I generally start saying, let's do the same. Always, like, the game isn't over until it's over. Um, you know, you might as well give it the best try you had. Try and identify the weakness, and sometimes you're going to lose games. Um, everyone loses. Everyone does. So you just, you got to not take it personally, that kind of thing. So I know as I perform back, because I think too much about what I'm doing, uh, kind of semi chuck How do I avoid this to get more consistent in general? Uh, it's something that I noticed, I used to do this actually a lot, um, where I obsess about my own performance, and that's because, you know, I'm a streamer, and I make guides on YouTube, so I've got to be very aware of, like, oh, am I performing to a level where people will trust me, uh, that kind of stuff. And also, like, amongst my circle of friends, I'm generally known as being very good at games, so I put pressure on myself from that angle, and you've just got to learn to let go. Um, just relax, just focus on your own performance, just put what other people think out of your mind, because you're not going to see these people again. Uh, you're not going to play with these people probably ever again. You're not going to... What, what do their opinions matter? And you've just got to keep in mind that if someone does start getting confrontational, like, if you if you aren't a confrontational person, if you can't take confrontation, then you could just mute them and just put it out your mind and say, whatever, bye, and just mute them. Like the guy in chat with a stupid name who's been spamming nonsense. Like, I don't want to deal with that. I'm ill. I can't be bothered with someone asking me, why do I look like a pedo? I don't want that in my chat, so I just got rid of him. Um, that's the option you have. Your thoughts on attack torp? Um, bad, in general. It can sort of work on payload maps because you build a kill dozer, but there's so many good counters to that, especially with Symmetra being in meta now that it just doesn't work very well. Torbjorn is definitely better when people are running at him because his weapon benefits from that. His right click is a lot stronger with that. His turret is a lot better with that. Um, it's easier to get your turret built up when you have these very reliable downtime defense points. Uh, the armor is easier to use when people you know, are falling back towards something rather than trying to push forward, because when you're trying to push forward and you're trying to provide armor, then you can leave armor scraps all over the fucking place and no one's getting them. Um, and in general, like, Torbjorn's momentum-based, so the thing with Torbjorn is you build up an ultimate, and then you can just hold on to the ultimate, they push, you use the ultimate, you stop their push, and then you very quickly can build up a second ultimate with their next push, because other people will then use their ultimates, and so you combo with that, you get a lot of damage out, and then your next Molten Core is ready. Everyone has extra armor, everyone's more survivable, you need to build up that momentum. Um, and go from there. So I think you just, uh, you run a big risk on Attack Torb with just losing all momentum, and it's not going to work very well. Speaking of fire picks, any advice for dealing with fire as a tank player when the hit scan cannot kill her? Um, just play defensive. Uh, try and stay out of open sight lines. Be very aware of where the fire is poking from. Try and catch the fire as uh, rockets as much as possible. Otherwise, don't be afraid to swap to a more flexible team lineup. If you are going to drop the Reinhardt, you can swap to Zarya, for example, who can't kill the fire but can benefit incidentally off the enemy team having a fire by just charging up very quickly and getting a lot of damage. mid is when people start accepting hands on it, or mid plat is your smurf. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, let's see. Valk is a good Zen streamer. Kappa, 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 Kappa. Yeah, that's fine, I've colored. Just be aware when you send messages, they do appear on chat. Um, I, I banned him as well. So, <laughs> yeah, I tried to ban him as well. Uh, unrelated, but what are your weaknesses of new Bastion sides of big hit, but it just seems like a master of all. Um, inflexibility, low burst damage until he gets tank mode. And I think the big hitbox is honestly very underrated in terms of how he how he performs. The streams were Chips Hyen and uh, Mort from well, X Reunited. Uh, I think his stream is Mort O W. His Twitter is definitely at Mort O W, so you can follow me on that. It's M O R T E O W. Do you think Widowmaker is having a good comeback in the meta after 3 tank gets less popular? I think Widowmaker's going to make a comeback. 
Uh, I think Widowmaker is always going to be an incidental pick. I think Widowmaker is always going to be like you bring it out, you play it for two minutes, and then you swap into something else. Uh, part of that is because Winston's getting buffed against Widowmaker in a big way. Fifteen percent less crit box. Uh, Winston can just jump on Widowmaker, and it's now more survivable. If you think about it, you need two headshots to kill a Winston, but you need five body shots. If you can't land the two headshots as easily, then Winston's just a lot stronger, and that's not even counting the bubble. Uh, so Winston's got a lot stronger against Widow. Um, as a hard counter, which is, is kind of hard. Caster is also a good Zen and a streamer, yes. Did Zen ults only be used reactionary? No. Uh, if you think that, like, if your team is slowly dying, but you think you can win the team fight, just pop it. Like, a one team fight is a one team fight. Um, you should be winning them. Just be aware of, like, try and keep track mentally of how fast Graviton Surge comes out. So, Graviton Surge just used to take about two minutes to build up these days. Uh, just keep your eye out on, like, the last time they Graviton Surge. And if they haven't done one in a while, might be worth holding on, um, just a little bit longer. Also, Roll of Tor, when, he's better than other DPS, uh, when is he better than other DPS, like Soldier Reaper, etc.? Uh, the Roll of Torbjorn is to provide a solid backbone to the team, he's to provide like a back line, a fallback point, so you just you have somewhere to run back to that the enemy team cannot push into easily without taking a lot of extra damage that they shouldn't be taking anyway. Uh, he's also there to just bulk up the team, like I said, he's very momentum based, so you want to get that momentum rolling. When you do, then it starts working better. That's the issue I have, that's why I'm not streaming, yeah. Uh, but in general, like that's what Torb is good at. When you start having momentum with Torbjorn, he's very difficult to crack at times. Uh, you've got to go like far to counter him. Widowmaker is actually a very good counter to Torb as well because you just snipe the turret out. Uh, Reinhardt is actually a very good counter as well just because you can block a lot of his damage. And like the Torbjorn turret takes fucking forever to kill a Reinhardt barrier, so that's a, a good way of blocking that. Also, yeah, if you're lagging, not a bad idea. Uh, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan personally of Torbjorn Symmetra defenses, um, I find they're too reactionary, too defensive, like they're postured too far back and the enemy team could just has all the initiative in the world, so yeah. Yep, so you got some space tour in Hollywood, pro teams occasionally running, uh, they do do it every now and then. How are you feeling? Are you saying right, uh, right central with a part of the team in Lemsip? I'm actually drinking tea at the moment, I've actually forsaken my normal coffee. Unfortunately, my brother has bought PG tips instead of Yorkshire tea, which I think is sacrilege. We live in Yorkshire, we should be having Yorkshire tea. Uh, thanks for answering your and, uh, questions, thank you for calling to content, awesome. Glad you're here, glad you're taking part. Good to easy to talk on. Uh, you generally want something that creates a bit more outward pressure, something that can run around and deal damage. Uh, I like playing Soldier with him. Soldier is a good pick with him, McCree is also a good pick with him. Just something standard, something that can stand with the Reinhardt and shoot out a lot of damage and punish the enemy team if they're taking too long pushing forward or if they're trying to take too many liberties um, going forward. Also, um, reflexively, um, like on the opposite side, if they have a Torbjorn, playing stuff like Tracer and Genji suddenly becomes that much harder. So if they're playing Tracer Genji, Torbjorn can actually shut that down quite well. They have to deal with the Torbjorn first. Like, especially playing Tracer, you can't afford to just blink around willy-nilly. You've got to get rid of that tor uh, turret first, and they'll often use the bomb to do it. Uh, Genji's also the same, but you can't just take liberties, you can't dash around, because the consistent damage, so if you think about how Tracer and Genji survive, it's by evasion. Torbjorn is hard to evade because he just deals this consistent damage. Same reason why Winston's good. Um, so having like, if they're running a heavy dive comp and you're holding the second point, Torb's actually not a bad idea. The big thing is that you, you just got to be aware that it, like if they've taken the first point and they're just hammering down on the second point super fast, Torb's probably not a good idea instantaneously. But if you manage to have a little bit of time, then Torb's honestly okay. Uh, just Josh. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Of course, sending me dirty messages. I know you can't do that with streams on. Just, just wait till after. I send them over Discord. Uh, I wanted to say all of all the tanks had to do with them. Diva is really good. Yes, Diva is actually really good. Uh, you talk to Faramay. You talk to Valkyr. He'll tell you every time that Diva was the worst thing to deal with. Just made a new account coming from console. To be honest, all I feel happening is three men wait turns for games to be called a Smurf. Not as far as I imagined. Uh, that's going to happen. Overwatch has a very aggressive Smurf detection. Very aggressive Smurf detection. It will find people who are above the skill curve and then it will put you in special, like a special queue almost of other smurfs and yeah, you, you've got to go with that. Hope you feel better today? A little bit. My body's less achy. Am I not green tea? Because we don't have green tea. I just have normal Yorkshire tea. Normal, well, no, not even Yorkshire tea now. It's PG tips. But... Is Soldier good with everyone? Pretty much. That's, that's why he's meta. 
I'm drinking tea is very British. It's actually not. Coffee's becoming the norm. I think that's about done. Do I have to focus the turret as far? Yes, you've got to kill the turret, because if the turret's not dead and you fly up into the air, you're just going shot, 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 and then it takes forever. Anyway, that will do it for today. Uh, a little bit shorter, perhaps, than normal, but whatever. It was an interesting topic to talk about. I know I might have deceived a couple of people by saying Torbjorn's the focus, but hey, I wanted to talk about this tilt game, wanted to talk about tilt, and it's a good topic while I'm ill uh, to, to talk about. So yeah, thank you for watching to the end if you are on YouTube. We do this live on stream at 10 p.m. GMT on Friday and Saturday. Not this week. This week we're going to be doing it on Saturday, Sunday. So we'll be doing coaching the many tomorrow as well to make up for the fact that we missed yesterday um, because I was ill and hopefully I'll feel even better tomorrow. Uh, okay. If you want to send footage into coaching the many, uh, this is how you do it. I type coaching in chat. Uh, it's also in the description below if you're watching on YouTube, but to get footage sent in, you send it into oamreviews at gmail.com. Include the hero name and the rank in the title, plus a description and a YouTube link is best. Uh, you've got to record it yourself and upload it to YouTube. Uh, if you are a Twitch subscriber as well, include that in the title. It makes it easier for me to see who's a Twitch sub and who's not. And if I have two games that are very similar and want to do like Tracer, for example, and one's a Twitch sub, one isn't, I'll probably pick the Twitch sub just as a little way to give back. Uh, so definitely a good way of doing that. Otherwise, uh, yeah, that wraps it up for us today. Thank you for watching to the end. Toodles.